at a time of energy transitions globally, at a time where we have an obligation and an opportunity, and on International Peace Day, I'm so glad you're here. I'm going to talk to you about batteries, but I'm actually going to start with electricity. We are forecasting in North America that we're going to use four, in the next four to seven years, double amount of electricity. Electricity doesn't count or care where the electrons came from. So batteries are really critical. And this is how we have a chance to keep our cities light, keep our lifestyle kind of keeping with what we have today, and also make a mindful transition into this energy crisis coupled with climate crisis. In fact, many of our friends alive today on this earth are already experiencing not a threat, but a crisis. And in fact, most of us have touched experiences like this. This is New York City in 2012. Only one building was prepared for a superstorm. We are done with the discussions whether we have climate change or climate opportunity. We have a threat. We're done with the debate if the data is here. This clearly illustrates that all these years, up and downs have happened, but never at this level. We have an obligation, we have an opportunity, and frankly, a call to action. You came here today, you look at this video now, and you think about the opportunities that you have, the ecosystem that you touch. We are basically going into an era of consideration. There's no question we have to lower emissions. There's no question that we have infrastructure in some parts of the world that are aging out, and therein lies the opportunity. We have the opportunity to strengthen our electricity. We have an opportunity to welcome the new technologies, and there are many of them. This chart, which I also showed in 2019 when I was at this fabulous event, I love this, this gang, uh, shows this idea that we are democratizing energy. We are distributing energy, and we put responsibility potentially onto the users of energy. As you see, generation is now decoupled from transmission and distribution. In fact, we're all in it. If you have a little bit of capital, you can now make an investment, and you can participate yourself. Batteries carry a very special role in this ecosystem because the electrons don't care where they came from. Batteries love to store them. Batteries can be small or big. They can be inside your house, under your bed, but only if they're safe. So let's think about how the energy transition is thinking in general about this value proposition. First is safety. And this has been a heritage for product developers for very many years. But there's also affordability. Can we afford this in this ecosystem within the economic framework that we right now have? And what about performance? Can I meet, can I participate, and how can I do this? I'm going to stay on safety because affordability and performance is quite obvious, and I'm happy to speak to you afterwards as well about this topic. But let's just provoke a little bit of a discussion on safety. How about I offer a new paradigm shift? Why not set the bar to say no explosions, no fires? What does that mean? How does that work? And how are we doing? Well, first of all, lithium-ion is the main carrier of energy storage for urban environments. There will be many technical solutions, but lithium-ion is critical. Battery technology and storage is very, very complicated. Lithium-ion was invented in the 70s and first commercialized in the 90s, so 30 years later, we have an abundance of electronics now powered by lithium-ion. And as an industry, there has been a lot of learning. It's not perfect. When you look at cell phones, one in 10 million actually have issues. An acceptable risk, and you hold the cell phone, you know it's getting hot, you know there is a problem, you put it away, if it's a small explosion, you can probably live through it. Not getting so cool when you go into electric vehicles. One in 2,000. Same statistical chance of failure. Or, as you saw in the mega news yesterday in the United States, big installations, one in 10. Unacceptable. Why is that? Is it that the industry doesn't know about the root cause? Well, some of us know, and some of us are absolutely trying to 
share some of these. So this is a little bit of knowledge for those of you who care. There are three main causes for basically a thermal runaway or an explosion. Most predominant are internal shorts. Internal shorts mean I connect the anode and the cathode, and I create a very, very efficient pathway for electrons to go, and they go really, really fast. A second cause is overcharge. That is the product owner's worst nightmare, the guy who introduced the battery to power the device. This is when I send the wrong signal, voltage or current, and at a, a bigger event than it was actually predicated by the spec sheet. And the last one is, of course, an external short. You can think about this as a service guy getting distracted. The daughter needs pickup from ballet and puts a wrench across the interface. All three, quite well understood. So what's the industry doing about this? Well, let's first look at what happens when this goes. So let's t look at, here is an internal short, a legacy producer, an internal short, goes into heating, getting really hot, gases are percolating inside the containment, and boom! We have standards. We have an opportunity to basically help the industry do this. And here are some that really matter. But I'm sad to tell you that this company shall remain unnamed because they're not unique. Big, big companies, not scrappy startups, are actually devising their technology to pass the tests, not the intent of the test. So what happens then? Well, so then they know they have some liability associated with the battery technology going out, and they go to the next level of protection, containment. Containment comes in three different categories, ventilation, sprinklers, and detection. Let's take one at a time. Ventilation means I basically activate on smoke or heat. It opens automatically, and it avoids, if it works properly, an explosion. Very, very important. With that, typically when we go into installations in urban environments, there are also experts coming to the stage saying, well, if you have an explosion, I can calculate how much gas you produce, and therefore you need this open area to let the gases vent. Well, do we allow it at all times? Can we afford it? Can we fit it in urban environments? Maybe not always. Hence, shortcuts are being taken. Second containment, sprinklers. Sprinklers are meant to cool down. Easily activated, typically heat activated, but they don't prevent the fire. They clean them down, and we need a safety system around it. Sec the third one, smoke detection. Again, promoting an alarm, calling the firefighters to come in, and basically needs action very, very quickly. So, Robert Frost comes to mind. Very fun poem, very important why. We are two roads, a crossroads. Are we going to go for the explosions? Are we going to go for the fires? Or is there a different way? I say, no way. Let's look for safety. At this conference, at many of the venues, and across universities across the world, there have been innovators at this problem for a long time. I'm one of them. And I think it's really important that we, A, acknowledge the problem, and two, now look for opportunities to solve these. So, safety is going to make a huge difference in this paradigm shift. If we don't solve it, we will fail at the climate crisis. We will fail at setting energy storage into urban environments. And this is critical, guys. So if I now rank my opportunities, safety, flexibility, performance, and cost, let me share what I've done. So I thought about this a little bit differently. If I can do small electrochemical units, and I separate them thermally, and yet I allow for them to have thermal conduction to a heat sink inside the cell. I make it chemistry agnostic, so whenever I have a shortage of a metal or a compound, I can substitute with something else. 
all of the capex that are going in right now to build factories is made for robotics and automation. So this type of solution, where you use a robotic arm, pick in place, put in the electrochemical units into an existing structure, makes it really easy to be adaptable to what the current opportunity for supply chain is. How nice. In addition, in this featured cell, I have no electronics. Everything sits inside the cell. And why does this matter? Because when I have a short, same short, inside the cell, I heat up one unit, but it cools down by itself because the heat is let away and the gases are removed. And there are so few gases. So no explosion, no fire. In fact, let's look at some results. So I have the Cadenza cell and a legacy player, a very large legacy player. I'm now going to institute an internal short, and you're going to see what happens. A nail goes in. It's not the nail test. It is a proxy for an internal short. What happens? Here it goes. The Cadenza system shows you a little bit of smoke. The legacy system goes into fire. And look at this. 30 minutes later, every single one of those cells exploded. This is a design problem. This is not a lithium-ion problem. This is a design problem. And it's simple. There's no smoke and mirrors. <laughs> There's no silver bullet of any type of knowledge. It's very simple. It's how much gas I generate, how much heat I generate. I just generate less. This is just one of many solutions in this space. But it really, really matters. So, this is not where lithium ion is safer with one given cathode chemistry. For example, there are lots of stories in the marketplace right now to say, oh, if you just use iron based LFP cells, it's very safe. Not true. You generate hydrogen on some of these occasions, which self ignites. There is no silver bullet. It has to come down to the design point. So, I'm using the highest possible cathode energy density. Why? Because I care about the urban environment. I want to put systems where people are. That's where we need the electricity. So let me show you what happens when I put this into large systems. So here's a module, so a number of these cells, 12 in fact. I'm going to take a super long nail and put it in. So I put three of my cells into Thermor 1 away, which is the technical lingo for putting them into fire. So all three of them go in. What happens? I develop some smoke. But here is the thing. The module continues to run. You, let's say you're driving a car. You just lost 1% or 0.5% or 0.25%, depending on the range of your cell or of your car. If you have a house and you're powering your backup power or your peak shaving, if you have a chance to be in a market where you participate in demand charges, you lost 0.25% or 0.1% of your whole system. This is revolutionary. It is not electronics. It's built in. As you see, this is an, what we call a naked pack. So my call to action and to you guys is raise the bar. Safety and reliability is our decision. As consumers, as designers, as future planners, as academics, we must demand no fire, no explosion, by design. And here's the thing. If you do that, you don't need the containment. So we lower cost. We let all the money go to the active materials and the design and the opportunity to actually give you power. And you have high energy because I can install these in really remote areas. I can put them under your bed. I can put them in your electricity closet. I can put them under your sink. And haha, -ha, I can put them behind a glass door and I can create a speaking piece for your friends to show that you too participate in the energy transition. I can link this. I can create now a virtual power plant by placing these batteries almost like books on bookshelves in your house. And you can have an app to participate in this paradigm shift. Now we are revolutionizing this energy transition. So, urban environment, that's where it's it. 
That's where we have issues. If we can put batteries safety, safe batteries into urban environments, our big cities, into our homes, into commercial buildings, into arenas, into hospitals where electricity is used, not only do we have continuous power, but we can sleep well at night. So, we named this speech, Battery Safety and Explosion, Explosive Issue, but it's not. In fact, it is completely achievable. And my hope is that we can come together as a community. We're interested in energy. We're interested in being good stewards for the future. We are interested in participating in generations, with generations to come. We need to work together. And we need to let data have one voice at the table. We are done with the times of denying we have a problem. We have a catastrophe coming our way. We are done with a large greenwashing hitting our homes and cities. Welcome in innovation meets pragmatism. Welcome in humility meets optimism. Welcome in a little bit more hustle, a little bit more collaboration, and a lot more of solutions. We are done talking about things that don't work. We are obligated to find things that work. Today, United Nations calls International Day of Peace. It means love, mindfulness, openness. The doors are closing. We can make a difference. In my mind, we must make a difference. The olive branch is extended from bootstrapped innovators everywhere. I just gave you an example of something that has been developed that is available today. And I am not alone. There are so many. So thanks for being at this conference. Thanks for being here. And thanks for your engagement. We need every piece of energy we can get.